Oh, yo, what's up? I'm getting busy with my new machine. Let me turn this bad boy down here. Trying to get rocking. This is the new Cord Triton Extreme. The new fat machine. Well, it replaces the old Triton, and I see why they made it. It's got this dope fat tube that increases the sound to make it funky. You know what I mean? Some more bass, some more grit, some more bottom, baby. Bottom. I want that bass in your face. Well, check it out. We're going to cover everything in this video. This is our latest video. We're going to cover everything. We're going to make sure you know how to work the entire machine as usual. So look, I'm going to get back to making some funky tracks. We're going to start the tape, and I'll see you in a few. Okay, it's time to get busy. We here at Sample Kings do everything to make sure we cover everything. So let's cover the back and the front and show you how to work yourself around this dope machine. This is our Triton Extreme. This is the extreme left-hand side of our Triton. Now what they've added compared to the old Triton, they've added this new thing which is our Valve Force, which is controlled by our Valve Force key right here. We can turn it on or off. See the light up there? Now we have our real-time controller switch, which allows us to actually control the sounds through uh, these four knobs. I can turn the key here, press the key rather. I can input trim, increase. Actually here it's the LPF. I can use this is resonance and high-pass filter. This is the EG Intensity Envelope Generation. And we also have our release here. And that corresponds to where the first light is at. I can switch here. These are assignable. You can assign these to the controllers. And here, this row below here is for our valve force. We'll turn the valve force on. See that? And here, boost with tube gain more output or less output. It can make it a little gritty too. See that? That's really cool. Now also we have our joystick. We can pitch bend or modulate. We have our switches here and a ribbon. Above that we have a trap door. We'll turn this switch out that way and pop it up. And here, we can add more memory. Now you can max it out with three 32 meg RAM boards. Now ours comes with 16 megs. We can also access any mode we like here with the section or our mode section. We can go to combi, which are combinations of sounds. We have our program. We have our sequence mode when sequencing tracks up. No, bass, kicks, snare drums, and you may want to have another track with just a bass line, another track with keyboards, so you can like sequence a song up. Let's have our sampling mode. We have also global and media also here, where media, we can actually use the media, which is our compact flash, or our internal media to save and load data. And our compare button is used to compare what we played before compared to what we uh, played just recently. So compare two different tracks we actually recorded and see which one you want to keep. Next to that, we have our value. We can change our values right here. And of course, we have our up and down cursor. Okay, here's our main view. Now what I love about the Triton is that you have this ability to actually touch the screen and go to any point in the menu you want to go to. You can go to here, let's say, you know, pick a sound or something. We can cancel out of that. So it's really cool. I love the Triton because we can actually do that and instead of having to go to a lot of the buttons, we're going to pick something you want to use, pick any part of it, and get to that. Now, we can also use this cursor right here to change parameters. And we can also use this value right there. See that? This little button right here? Oh, it slides right up and down. It's pretty cool. We can also use, of course, our data wheel. Now, we can also exit any... Let's say we go to a particular section, we go in here, let's say the menu, we can exit right here outside the menu. Go to menu, we can pick edit track parameters, we can exit from that also. Now also, let me zoom out a little bit here, we have our number pad. So for example, you got a 
particular parameter you want to just put the numbers in, you know what the number's going to be. We'll play 64, and you should see with the 64 right there, or 88, and right there. These are various ways we can get around our Triton to access the information much quicker than usual. Okay, here we have our bank section right here. Now we can access groups of sounds. A, B, C, D, up to G in the first row, and H to N. This is good for our program bank, our combi bank. We can put samples in banks also, and just general MIDI uh, instruments in banks at the same time. Here's our sequencer section. When you have your sequencer and you're making your tracks up, you're making a song up, of course you would like to locate the beginning of that track. You can record a new track in the sequence. We can stop, start that track, pause, we can rewind, or we can go fast forward. This is our arpeggiator section. You know, sometimes you have a sound you put on, you have an arpeggiator going on with it. I'm just going to try something out right here. We'll turn it on. See? And we turned up the tempo. We have a gate. We can have a release also. See that? So we can actually control our sound with our arpeggiator section. Now here also, you turn on and off right there. And here's our sampling section. We can arm the sample. That means we're getting ready to record a sample, make sure the machine's actually ready, and we can actually sample that particular sound. There's the back of our Triton Extreme, as you can see here. Here's our MIDI section right here. We have our through, our out, and our input for MIDI. Here we have a damp. We can put like a foot pedal right there. You know, a little foot pedal for using controls, and a switch, and the pedal right there. Now here we have, right on this side, we have our USB input. This is USB 2, and that's USB 1, as you can see there. We also have a input and output here for our SPDIF. And here we have our audio input section. We have 1 and 2. Now right here is our gain. We can gain the amount of input going into our Triton Extreme. We also have right here, as you can see, this switch, which goes from mic to line. And over here we have our audio output. Now these here are individual one, two, three, four outputs we can assign for audio output. And here's our main stereo output right here, which is our left, which is generally the mono if you want to use one cable, and we have our right, when you want to get a stereo field going on with the left and right. Now it's important to have the right power plugged up into your core Triton Extreme, all right? Make sure your cable's in tight and not very loose, all right? And make sure that you have this actually set to a ground, like some sort of like a box that has some sort of circuit breaker to it. Something will happen to your core Triton. It's very important. Read the manual for more information. <laughs>
so the ability to actually change the sounds within the program, which makes it very cool. You can also say, for example, I want to check out a different sound totally. Well, here's what I would normally do. I would go here, and I'd grab it right there, and I could pick a sound, a little category. I can go from keyboards, organ, bells, strings, vocals, brass, or even here, I've got a bass. Or I can go back to motions. Or let's go back to keyboards and select my sound. I select it, I press OK, and I have the sound I want to use. So here in program mode, we can play that one particular sound and we can adjust it and get that sound to be the right way you want it to be. We can also actually save that sound. We can go here to write the program and we can write that program into our various banks within our Korg Triton Extreme. We can select the sound we want to maybe fix it up and change it around a little bit and pick it how we want to use that sound. We can say, okay, I want to save that sound. We can pick where to save it back at. We'll save it, save it here, press OK. And the sound, you sure? You can press OK, and the sound is saved right back where it's at. Or you can select a new bank and save it to a new user bank, which is an unused bank you have right there in your Korg Triton Extreme. We can also change our arpeggiator. For example, some sounds you'll notice, you'll be able to play those sounds and have a little arpeggiator to them, or they won't. Like here, for example. No arpeggiator? I'll press the arpeggiator button. Here on my Triton. We can go here to our arpeggiator and we can select different types of arpeggiator settings. See that? We can latch it. We can sort it. We can change the resonance. We we'll turn the arpeggiator section off. And you can actually adjust your arpeggiator function on your Korg Triton Extreme. We can also sample actually in this mode. We'll show you more about sampling later on in our DVD. Okay, here in performance mode, we can also actually use our menu button to edit some parameters in our performance mode. We can go to menu right here, and as you can see here, we can actually edit some parameters. Play, of course, we're already in play here. And we can actually go to edit basic, edit pitch, edit filter, edit amp, uh, common LFO, which are low frequency oscillation, arpeggiator, uh, the insert effect, and our master effect. So, for example, we can go here to the amplification here, and I'll lower it down. You see, we've changed the actual uh, amp level. Let's can zoom in actually, we'll show you a little more of that. So you can see a little more of what we're doing here. Exactly. And up and down. I can also uh, escape that, go exit, and go back here to menu, and next I can press pitch. Now here in pitch, we can actually control the pitch slope. We can control the ribbon effect, for example. We can slide the ribbon, and we can actually change the actual effect and how that ribbon works. We can also go here, move the cursor over, and we can change the slope, of course, the AMS, the intensity, we can change the pitch of the envelope generator. We can change the, the portamento also. So we have many ways we actually change and affect our sounds in the program mode using our menu button. We can also change the filter. As you can see our filters here. We have a low pass re resonance and we have a low pass and a high pass filter. See it shows you right here in a little diagram. And we can change the trim of that filter from zero to 99. We also have here our frequency for filter A and our frequency for filter B. What you need to do is just press the sound and see how you can change that sound and affect to get the sound you want perfect. This is really cool. That way you can adjust your sounds and have your own sounds to use in your production. We like it a lot. It's really funky. I use it a lot for basses to get my basses really deep and funky. You know, like that little John type sound. We can also go back and go to our master effects. Now, most sounds in our Cork Triton Extreme have master effects on them. As you can tell, you can hear some sort of reverb or some effect on those sounds. And here we can actually, I'll play a sound. I can go to parameter here. I can either lower this. See that? Or turn it up more, get more bottom in that sound. It's kind of cool for when you get more bassy in some other sounds. I think they're not too uh, bassy already or 
don't have enough base at all. We get mid-range. We can get a high master EQ gain. So you can see we have the uh, actual MFX1 and the MFX2 sends. It's like sending, this is on, this is on right here. I can turn it off, I can turn that off too. See, it's different now. Turn it back on. We get a little hall effect, get the plate going at the same time. I can even change that effect. See, I put a limiter on it. Now once you get an effect we like or get some settings we like within our Coral Triton on our program mode, we can actually just say, okay, we'll keep it and we'll remain there. We can exit and we can actually save that sound to our user bank. Okay, program is kind of cool, right? Now we'll check out combi mode. Combi mode is kind of really cool. You actually have, you know, one sound on one hand and one on the other hand. You have a bass here, a keyboard here, or you can have multiple sounds. You have a combi mode here and we've got some. So I got a moop thing going here and a string here. So you can have two different sounds or more than two sounds. You have up to eight different sounds and layers. We'll take that combi mode and we're going to show you how it works and how I can usually get some real funky stuff out of it. Check this out. Okay, now we're going to be in combi mode. Now combi mode is very cool. It allows us to put several different instruments on our keyboard. We can have the bass in one hand, and we can have the keyboard in the other hand. Now how this actually works is that, uh, we'll go back here to our uh, program selection. We'll have several different sounds. And all these sounds are right here, as you can see. We have a keyboard, a bass, a drum. And I can actually select the sound, so I want to change the sound, I can change the sound. I want that kind of bass right there, let's fret this one. Press OK, and I've changed the sound here which is now the fretless bass. As you can see, it's a fretless bass right here. We have the drums. I can change my drums to be any kind of drum I want, or I cancel out of that. I can go here to have other drums added into it, and they're all on or off. Now here these nits mean they're in, and then, as you can see here, it could be off. Or on. Now I'll play the bass, and the bass ends up being here in my left hand. And so what happens here is that we've got this ability to have the bass over here. So I have a keyboard here and a bass on this side. It's really cool. It allows us to split our keyboard up and have two different sounds at the same time or more than that many. We can also go to other sounds. Let's see, we tried another one here I saw which is 0B59. Uh, and here we have a dynamic orchestra. Now in this dynamic orchestra, we're going to zoom in for you, and you'll see that we have many different sounds here, for instance. There we go. We have many different sounds right here. We have our woodwind, we have a brass, we have drums even. Hear that drum hit? That's along with that, that big horn sound, strings. On the other part of our board, I can change the strings if I want to. Or press OK. I changed my string there. See that? We have the brass. We don't pick any part of the category you want. We can go to. Why have a string? Let's use a keyboard instead. We we'll go to keyboard. Press OK. sounds that run in combination together all as one sound it's really cool to get a combination going and then save your own combination to give your own music its own sound that way you won't sound like everybody else when they have their own triton that's what I like about the triton you can actually combine sounds and make up your own sounds with these sounds now we can also mix our sounds now here for example we can take the sounds in this dynamic orc one and we can mix the sounds we can take the brass and bring it down or bring it up. We can actually take the, let's say, uh, these woodwinds. See, so you hear that much clearer. 
So we can mix each sound in our combination and give it the right flavor we want that sound to have. It's really cool when you want to combine basses, for example, and you want to get a nice deep bass hip hop sound or one for your club beat. What I suggest you do is to get a nice bass, you call a bass up, and then you get combinations of basses and save that program, and that'll be your particular bass sound you want to use for certain songs, of course. Now, we can also not just mix, we can change your arpeggiator function in some sounds. Let's pick a different sound here. Let's use a, let's a C, and we're going to go to a. Okay. I'm supposed to count it. I'm holding several notes down at the same time. We can actually change the octave. I pick those notes out. We're going to go back to a different sound. And I Change my pitch of my arpeggio. Let's go back to it. I'm holding some notes down now. I'll change the octave. Then I'll change the sort. Turn the latch off. Now let's sort by the highest note here. Key sync. No key sync right here. Latch works with key sync, as you can see. It's an up and down the key range. And we can see here Axie arpeggio running A and B. We can turn one of them off for on. Go to B or A. See? We'll turn it back on here. And we can actually affect the arpeggiating motion using this arpeggiator edit window. It's really cool. And of course, in combi, we can also sample also. We can sample some sounds in also. Now, it's really cool, of course, when you've got these arpeggios going, you've got that happening. And you can also, let's go back to the actual uh, main combination screen. And you got these different sounds. Well, sometimes you want to have some sounds activated more than others when you're actually in this combi mode. What we'll do, we'll go to main screen, and we have a zone. How this works, as you can see right here, let me get a pen out right here right now. And you're going to see that we have these various sections that each sound is going to be in. Here's the sound right, right now. It's covering this one area here. This other sound is covering this entire length of this area here. This one's covering this one zone. So certain zones of the keyboard are being covered by certain sounds that are on or off. And you can see that here. Uh, like for example, here we have C. And I'll move the, the cursor button here. We'll see the little arrow move down to the next actual sound, which is this vocal sound. And its range is only right here. We go to brass, and its range is only from here to there. It's a pretty long range, actually. And you can see here, each sound has its own range. We can also, for example here, we have the top slope, the bottom slope, and the key. So we can see that the key is from C1 here, as you can see that there. And the top key is to C8, and you can see that. Here we have C1, which is our bottom key, to C8. See, but our zone is a, it's a, it's within that. And we can see here, for example, this one right here, which is uh, right here. This covers the entire length of the keyboard, as you can see, from C to G9. See that? So certain sounds can cover certain lengths in our keyboard, whether it's from the beginning to the end or a short section of our keyboard, when we have our combi mode. So if you're making a combination of, let's say, a bass sound or something, you have basses, you want to make sure that your bass sounds all have the same kind of feel to them and are always within that whole range. Let's say the bass is mainly on this side of the keyboard. So you don't want to just get keyboard bass from here to here. And sometimes you want to make sure you can actually have that uh, ability to have the velocity change. Well, here in the, the Vel Z, we can have the velocity change of certain sounds. Some sounds could be... And not, you don't hear that brass sound up there so much, and you won't even hear that kind of velocity change. 
But sometimes you get a drum, a drum here, a little hard, you get a better sound, but... See that? No drums, but... See that? We'll hit that sound very lightly. We got a little string thing going on, a little harp, and a little drum. So that velocity change actually affects whether the sound comes on or off. And you can actually do that right here in this section here by selecting our top velocity. And here's our bottom velocity. Some have zero, some have, they start at three. At 31 rather here, and 31 here, 31 here, and zero here. And their peak velocity is right here. And our slope is zero in some cases, and here it's 96. You need to actually check it out, pick out how you want the feel of your sound to be, so when you actually make those combinations up, you'll have the right velocity. So if you hit it very hard, you want a certain sound to be more aggressive, or very soft, you want a different sound, like with a hi-hat. Now here we also have our controller. This is our real-time controller knobs, where we actually have those knobs you see at the very end of our keyboard. We can control these knobs and assign them to different parameters. Okay, now here we have our controller section. Now of course um, in this control section we can actually set the parameters for the switches and knobs on the extreme left hand side of our core Triton Extreme. Here for example we have our switch assigned. We can have it to octave, uh, portamento, octave down, octave up. We can lo uh, joystick lock, X, Y, Y lock here. As you can see we can also have a ribbon lock. It's going to be all assigned to this one switch here. See this? And a second switch, too. We can also assign the real time knobs, which are located to the left of our screen, which are right over here. So, this is how we can assign them. See here, we have this assign right there set up. That's A, B, and C. This is B right here. There's one, three, four, one for each knob. Now you go back to our main screen here, you'll see that we can change the parameters for every single one of these knobs. Let's pick a different sound here now, for example, in combi mode. I'll go back to combi. I'll pick this warm orchestral string. I'll go to menu. Now in menu, I'll click on P4, which is edit zone, and next I'll go to the controller. Now here we are controller, as you can see, and it already has this preset for it. I'm going to turn this to expression for my first knob. Now I go to my first knob, see, and my expression can change. I'll turn this first knob. And so we can set different parameters for each knob. Now I go back here again to my main screen, and I can select a parameter here for my second knob. I can select LF, LPF cutoff, low pass filter cutoff. That's for knob number two. Now I'll click the sound, I'll turn knob number two, and you hear it, how the low pass can be cut off or activated. See? Hit the highs or low pass filter. So we can actually assign parameters to each one of those knobs through this section right here. Now here in combi mode, we can even actually change our parameters. For example, I go to menu and we may change the parameter here in our arpeggiator. We may have an arpeggiator for each one of those sounds. We can change that. Either A or B, arpeggiated groups at A or B. And we can also use our effects. Now our effects are like sends. We can have five effects at any one point in time, or have one for each particular sound, or have them go through each other. And you can see here we have one, two, five. That's effect. One, two, three, four, five. If we insert for effects also, press that button there, we can pick any effect we'd like to. 
We'll pick an effect there, go to cursor, and pick any effect from the, all the effects we have to choose from here in that particular item, or no effect at all. Press OK. We can have these effects run into each other, or use them for any particular output we'd like to use them for. Cool. So look, we're doing some funky things here. We gotta do the sequence mode. We must make a beat up. Then we wanna maybe add something on top of the beat. That means overdub. Then we wanna get maybe a bass line, you know what I mean? Put a bass in there. Then maybe a little keyboard. We wanna see what we can do with this chord so I can extreme. We're gonna do a few recordings, but what's most important is you understand how you can edit your data, how you can go back and quantize that particular part. I can also overdub and also ways to name the track, name the song, typical things you want to do so you don't get confused. And that's important. Always make sure, let me get mine right here, that you've got your compact flashcard. It's important. What we do is we'll take the compact, compact flashcard, we'll stick it into our, there it is right there. I can't even feel it. Let me put that in there. It goes right in there. See that? You put that in there before you start. Make sure your compact flashcard's in there. Then you turn the power on because we want to save the data. We want to save it right back down to compact flash. Remember that, okay? So, before we get busy, put the compact flash in, make sure the machine's off, then turn it on, and then we're ready to record something. Because if it sounds good, we want to save it. You know what I mean? Let's get busy. Okay, now we're in sequence mode. Now remember, we pressed the sequence button earlier. This is the mode we're in, and this is the view screen we're gonna see. Now as you can see here, it's got this default setting. We've got all the keyboard, 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 okay? You can select any sound you want. We have up to 16 tracks in this total sequence. It's really great. We have one through eight, and we have nine through 16. There's a mixer section also. We can mix tracks one through eight, or tracks nine through 16. We can loop and play each section from 1 to 8 or 9 to 16. We can even sample within this mode and have preferences also. Now, preferences, we want to make sure we're going to overwrite when we record for the first time. Or if we want to add on to that track and add a new part in to go blend with the other parts we have, we'll press overdub. Now, in order to record the sequence and get started, I'm going to press overwrite. We're going to write over everything that means we're going to make all new if you make a mistake we record again it's going to be all new not keep anything on the track let's get busy okay this is our screen for our sequence of course we press our sequence button and we get this sequence screen and see it says new song right here now the first thing we have to do is sort of pick a tempo i got a tempo already picked out here i press that little note sign right next to that there and i'll put a number in i'll say 96 is my tempo and i'll press enter I have a tempo for the specific sequence I want to start recording. Now, I always want to select sounds. Let's select sounds here from a bank. Let's say we've got this already. We can go to bank and we can select sounds from our bank. Or we can go to here. Let's cancel this. And we can go to keyboard and we can select sounds from a category. Now, I want to select some drums. So I'll press drums right here and I'll audition any drum sound I want to audition. Write that right there. That's the new pop kit. I'll press OK. And now you'll see it right here in my menu. It says track one, new pop kit, of course, in my new song. So now I have a drum kit selected. I've set up my record function for overwrite. And now I'm going to try and play a little rhythm pattern and see if we can record it in our sequence. So I'm going to make sure we start from the top. I'll press locate and we'll get started. OK, now I'm going to set up and record. I'm going to press locate from the start. Always go from the top of your sequence. Make sure you're at the top. We'll press the record button. Just record right on that button. See, it's lit up. And you see this is blinking green here on the stop, on the start stop button. Now, this is a metronome or a click track we call it, where you actually get a tempo or the pace of the speed of your beat. Now if you move your cursor over to your actual uh, 
tempo, I can go lower or faster, and no matter what, it changes. So get the right pace for your beat. Well now I'm going to record a little drum part on my track. I'll press the start stop button. And this will give me a two bar clip before it starts to record. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. stop. Now, it stops there at the end. I'm going to press locate. I want to play that back. See? So you got to make sure that you have that sequence set up properly. So I'm going to do right now, make sure that you also hit the notes and hit those notes at the right velocity so they're all even. Let's do that again. So now, I'm going to press the locate to the top again. I'll press the record function here on the sequence, and I'll press the start stop button. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. And I'll stop. Now I'll press locate and start okay see how I recorded properly the way I played it that's because we have our quantized value set to the right value which is right here our resolution but next I want to do an overdub first we're gonna do an overdub meaning we're gonna add to this track we've got the kick and the snare now we want to add a hi-hat Let's find a hi-hat. I like that one right there. I'm going to add a hi-hat. I'm going to press my locate button, make sure I'm at the top again, right there. And now I'll press the preference. See that? The preference button. Now, as you remember, as you remember before, we were in overwrite. Now we want to add to the track. We're going to go to overdub. We're in overdub, right? Now we're ready to record this new hi-hat part. Let's do that. Okay, now we're going to record the hi-hat in. I think it's right, right there. And we're going to overdub now. So make sure you hit the right velocity. That means the right each time the sound sounds the same level, all right? So I'm going to press locate to start from the top of my track. I'll press record right. And now we get a metronome again. A little click track right there. We'll press one, two. Three, four, two, two, three, four. I'll press stop. Now I'll press locate again and I'll press start. Now we got it going on there. That's approximately four bars. I want to make it loop. Let's make it loop. Okay, now we're going to make that drum beat loop. We're going to go here to the bottom view. We got the P L Y loop. One through eight. Press that button there. We got our drums right here. Press that button right there. We've got to select some bars here now. We got the top measure to the ending measure, the start measure to the end measure. Now watch this. We're going to go to here. We're going to start from one, we're going to go to four, we're going to do a four bar loop. Loop is activated. Now I'm going to go back to program, I'm going to press play start next. Now we'll press play start. Make sure though you start from locate first, hit the locate button. And you make sure you're at one, as you see right there, I'm going to hit it now. There we go. Two, three, four, two, three, four. See that? Right back again.
So we actually looped it within that sequence. Next, we're going to add a little bass line. Okay, we must select the bass sound. So, I'm going to go to this track again. We're going to look for a bass. Go to our categories. We've got a bass right there. We can audition various basses. And in order to hear them, see that? I'm playing. I'm not hearing them. You know why? We have to select the track. This is very important. You must make sure on the right track. Otherwise, you won't know what you're doing. Back to the piano again. See that? Now we know we're going to be in the bass. Okay, now we'll find a good bass I want to use right here. Uh, let's go with this fat bass. We'll try that bass right there. We'll press OK. And next, we'll record a bass onto this track. Okay, now I want to record a bass within the sequence. Here's what we're going to do right now. We're going to press locate. We're going to press the preferences. We're going to make sure we overwrite on that track. That's very important. Once you start overwriting the track, we're good to go. Now, we'll go back to that sequence, press locate, we'll press record, write, and now we're going to record a bass line. Now I'll try it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. Press stop. Now I press locate. change that around and record it differently. Watch this. Okay, now record a bass line over. We'll press record right, then start. Stop. Now I'll press locate. Okay, I'm gonna make sure our quantized value is right. Now, that might be a little off for me. In order to correct the quantized value of anything you're trying to record, you need to make sure you have the proper resolution or the quantized value. Let's check that out. Okay, now I want to check my quantized value. First, I'll press Menu. On Menu button, I'm gonna press my Track Edit. Now, here in Track Edit, we can see the two tracks we recorded already. We can see the drum and the bass. And of course, the cursor right now is on the bass track. That's within this measure here of 1 to 4, as you can see right there in our track edit screen. We'll press the top menu part right here in the corner, and you can see I have many parameters I can actually use to edit the data in this particular track. So I'm going to do the quantize editing right now. I have from measure 1 to 5, or actually that's the start of 5 right there. And so, as you can see here, we can quantize the entire region, those four bars, or with anywhere those four bars, from the one measure to the fourth measure and the one, nine, one click. Well here, we can select all. We can do the notes only, the control only, the aftertouch, the pitch bend, or the program change. In this case, we're going to do all those parameters. And we're going to set the actual quantize value to be 16th notes. Well, I watch, I can put it to actually make it read just quarter notes right there I'll press OK okay now after pressing OK and I quantize the value of this track, this baseline track I'm gonna play it back I'll make sure I put the problem here, I'm gonna hit locate always hit locate from the beginning See that? It did a different pattern. Now watch this. 
I'm gonna go on the other side of my keyboard here. I'm gonna press compare. Now, I'm gonna play it back again. I'll press locate. Let's just start from the top. And then we'll press start. See, it played a different ending this time than the last time. Because I used a quarter note quantized value, it quantized that note to the nearest value I set the quantize for. So, compare is great to use to compare whether you got the right quantize or whether you played it properly the way you wanted to actually have that part play. And this way, if you like it, you can keep it, or if not, you can erase it. Okay, we've got our bass line recorded. Next, we want to make sure we loop that bass line along with the drums. So I'm going to go right here to play loop, 1 through 8. So i got my loop on. And I want to make sure that I do a 4-bar loop like we have here for the drums. I'll go back to there. And I'll press locate to make sure I'm in the right spot and press start. Now once this loops, and you know it's going to loop, we're going to go to our next part. We'll follow the same procedure as we did before. Okay, she's looking good. There we go. Now 7th bar, 8th bar. Now I like to do a lot of times too, let it loop and then pick the sound out and play along with the actual track. Okay, now I want to select the sound. I'll go here to track. Select three as we did before. New sound. I'll pick a new sound to play here. Maybe we'll get something like a uh, keyboard. Um, we'll go to uh, play. We're going to locate first. Then play start. But first I press OK. Something a little cheesy here. Now, I'm going to go right here and we're going to press locate. We're going to press record. Then we're going to press, you know what to do, one, two, three, four. So I'll press stop. Now I'll press locate back at the top. Okay, that's good. So now I can keep that part if I'd like to or record over it. Okay, after adding that last part in, I can actually even edit that part. I want to make sure I can see it though. I go to menu and I'll press track edit. And we can see the parts right here. As you see, uh, as we keep adding a part, it adds on here to our track edit menu. Now here in track edit menu, you can actually also name your tracks. We can get here and go to a track. I'm going to name this track. We can call the track here bass or whatever. Um, we can select our sounds. We can delete. And this first track actually was a drum, so I can go D, R, U, M, S drums and I can press uh, OK and that track's now called drums. So you can name all your tracks. It's important to always name your tracks as you go along doing your production. It's very important. It keeps yourself organized and you know what's on each track as you move along. Now also here we can go to track parameters. We'll press uh, menu and we're going to track parameters. We can actually change the actual MIDI channel for each note. We can also, you can see here, pull this menu up, we can have it off, on, both, or external, or external too. Got that? So, in this case, it was on for both. That means internally on, also sending out output out of two MIDI channel one. So each track corresponds to a specific MIDI channel. So you got an extra sequence or an MPC 2000 or MPC 1000 or 4000, say, or another sequence involved, you can actually send this data back out 
to that particular sequencer out of whatever main channel you select to go to. That means we're here going to main channel 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, up to 16 different mini channels for each selected track. And this is 1 through 8, and of course, this is 9 through 16. We're here in menu, we're going to track menu, and uh, we can go here to pitch. Let's see, we're in pitch right there. We actually change the pitch of some sounds also. I can go back to, let's say, um, edit. Go back here to, uh, we'll pick the bass line, and we'll solo on, we'll press play. And the bass line is playing by itself, because it's soloed. I can go to menu. I can go to track parameters. I can go to pitch right there. The bass is right here. I can change that information on that bass. I can change the detune a little bit. I can go right down here. Let's put it right here, for example. I can change the bending range. I can transpose that particular sound. Click it right here. And do that over here. And we're going to go to pitch 1. And we're going to go here to bass. See that? We can change the pitch of that particular sound if we'd like to. We can detune it slightly if you want to. So we can change the data within the sequencer. Or actually just make it so it fits the particular, let's say, pitch you're trying to get. In case you got a sample, it's a record sample, it's not so much in tune, you can tune it up with the new Quark Trident Extreme. It's a really great system. They also change the bending range also at the same time, as you can see right here. We have other parameters right here also. We have the Use Program Scale. It's like a scale, uh, like Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, Tito, like a major scale or a minor scale. We can change the scale setting and delay actually to a particular track. We can delay that sound. That's a real set delay there. I delayed the bass sound. You see that? We can delay it a little bit behind the beat to give it that kind of feel that you want to have it. So you can do many different things in our sequencer section on our Triton Extreme. Okay, now we've got this thing. This is my compact flash right there. And we store our data right down in our compact flash. So before I start doing sequencing, I usually put my compact flash in first. So the first thing you do is to make sure that you cut your machine off first. And then, once you cut it off, you're going to put this inside. Then turn and power it back up. That's the way to do it. Okay, you know in sequencer mode, we can hit that menu button. The one that's to the right of our view screen. That menu button will open up different areas that we can actually look at the editing of a sequence. We can edit our MIDI information. We can also, at the same time, add effects to our IF effects or to the master effects and many more things. Check this out. Once we have our sequencer section up, after pressing sequencer, you can actually change some parameters and edit some parameters in our sequencer section. I'll press the menu button and now we can see here we have several options in our sequencer jump window. We have the play, record, our cue list, we've got a zone, our track edit, and our insert effects. Now, the main window actually takes us back. That's the play and record window. Back to menu. And next we have our cue list. Now, the cue list means it's pretty obvious. You have a song right there, let's say. You got one there. Let's go to right here. And we can put the next song there again. As you can see, continue step one. So we can actually have that. We can insert that there, as you can see. And I inserted that right into the track. It's pretty simple and easy to do. Press menu. And next we have our track parameters. You can see here we can delay a track slightly. That means delay it from where it actually is at. Now if you're talking about Scott Storch stuff, he somewhat delays sometimes uh, some instruments away from the beat. So it has an almost like that record kind of like out of sync feel almost, but it still sounds funky. Um, we also have here uh, use program scale. Now a scale has to deal with the scale that we use, a temperament, which is right here. 
like a normal scale is like a scale which is like a major scale do re mi fa sol la ti do and we don't have you know what i mean and other scales can be like arabian scales or egyptian scales so in this case you really don't need that and this is a great window though to help you understand more about the track and track parameters of course we have the ocs and we have our pitch we also have other information we can actually control we have MIDI also. Of course, this MIDI means that we have MIDI channel 1 corresponds to track 1. MIDI channel 2 corresponds to track 2. So we can actually even change this information and make this particular sound here can be read from here. See that? That's 2. So that means that these two sounds will both be playing the information data of MIDI channel 2. And now it's back to one. Next, we also have our MIDI filter. Now, when the Korg Triton Extreme is actually turned on, this is a default setting where everything is enabled. And you can actually uh, receive information and send information uh, on any MIDI parameter you'd like to. For example, we have here enable switch one, enable switch two. We also have the uh, foot pedal or switch. Uh, we also have the enable other control changes. Now this is for bank, let's see what that's for. That's for bank four, that's MIDI four, see that? I can go to MIDI three, and here we have real-time controllers, real-time controller two knob. We have here MIDI two, we have the enable the JSX and or as AMS, see that right there? We also have the, um, oh here it is, JSV, and we have our enable ribbon, that's a ribbon slide. So we can enable different parameters here on our Cork Triton to be sent or received. And it comes on default this way, but you can actually turn them off this way. And that way they won't send or receive that information. And it's controlling our MIDI filter. Next I have here are zones. Now zones work really well when you have your zones. Let's go back to the main zone page. Here on our main zone page you can see here we use zones to set, say for example the bass line could be on this section, the little guitar here, and that part could be on that part of the keyboard. And we can adjust our zones. As you can see at the top, we have a slope, top slope, and the bottom slope, and the bottom key. See that? And we also have that for it. 1 through 16. And that represents all of these 16 tracks within our sequencer. We also have the VLZ here. We have the velocity control, which you can see here, the top and the bottom, meaning the velocity peak. And the bottom of that velocity would be like 0 or just actually 1. And the slope, how steep that slope will be between getting from here to there. We have from 1 to 8 and 9 through 16. And we also have a controller. The controllers are the knobs that we have on the other end of our Korg Triton, which is to the left of our view screen. With those four knobs right there. We can actually assign each one of these knobs a parameter and assign to control that parameter. For example, here you see that we can control the master volume with the first knob. We can even change that. We can say we want to control the master volume. We want to control, uh, let's say, volume. See that? And then now that first knob will control the volume. It's assignable. So we can assign values and we can actually use them in real time. That means we're playing something and when the sequencer is going, we can turn those knobs in real time and affect those sounds. We also have our switches our two switches to the left of our keyboard on our Korg Triton Stream, of course. And right above our joystick, we can have the octave up or down, which you see right here. I've set it for up or down. This is up, I'll switch this for down. I can make that up and make this one down. So I can sign whatever I'd like to assign to each one of those switches. We also have our track edit, which is P5 right there. 
and here in track edit as you can see we see the tracks in our sequences see that right there and right here and we have these tracks you can go any track you'd like to say three it moves to three see that we can pick any song in this editor if we have more songs in here we can pick the resolution so it also acts as the temples here also and our master meter and we can also see the sequence information as the track goes by we can also name this song again or name the tracks within this track editor window so many things you can actually do we can do the tone adjust from 1 through 8 and 9 through 16 we have tone adjust 3 and 4 and also 5 and 6 so we can adjust the tone of each track this is a really cool feature I like it a lot and of course as we open each one of those menu items we have our main window on the top where this window opens up and gives a lot of the features we can actually do with a song. We'll delete that song, maybe rename it, or solo selected track. See that? That's really cool. Another feature we have here is our arpeggiator. We can control the arpeggiator function for each one of these tracks. Pick where we use B or A, or A or B. See that? Or off. In this case, it's off in the sequencer. Now also, let's go to exit, back to my menu button, we can add effects. Here we can add effects, we have up to five different places, one, two, three, four, five, see that? Five IF effects. We can route them through our routing system from one through eight or nine through sixteen. We can insert effect, we can say, okay, here, these effects are cool, I like this one in number four, but uh, I probably want to change that one or something. Let's see, we're going to go back to here, we'll say, click right there, and we have a list of effects, and we have groups to choose from, from this group. We can choose from our pitch group, our filter group, double size, look at that. And of course, the reverb group, cancel out. You can also click the panning right here, see that? And the bus assignment, and the send level with a one and two. Next, I can also press exit, and I'm back to my main sequencer window. Then I'll press menu. I also have here our last item is the P9, which is our master effect. Now, this is the master effect on the entire output of our core Triton Extreme. It works similar to the other effects. As you can see here, we can turn it on or off, and we can also assign whichever group, for whatever group you want to assign, what effect we'd like to use for that particular MF effect, whether it's one or MF effect two. We can also, for example, route, reroute. You can go to here and route this signal that comes out of here right back to this. So we're going to go chain it from one to two, the effects. See that? Now I'll chain the effects one behind the other one. Or we can turn this off it's a separate send here. As you can see, the send is going that way. It's a separate send here, which goes here. See that? It's goes to our returns one and two. We have a master EQ, which has our low, mids, and highs. And of course, you see here from the chain. As you saw early, when I chained it up, that's what that chain means. And this is our regular signal flow, which is going from left to right. And of course, our chain level. Okay, now we also have our valve force in the same section. See that? We've got our master effects. We have our MF1, our effect there. We have our master EQ, which you can actually change that. But we also have the valve force. That's that new vacuum tube system that they've added to our Cork Triton Extreme. Here we can see params we can actually set up for that value tube, or value force, as they say here. We can set up our input trim. We can have this ultra boost. Of course, our tube gain, our output level, as you can see right there. And you can see left and right, and then three and four. The inputs through that same tube. Now we can come out here through the output. It's very important to understand the concept of using that tube before you get started. 